You're listening to the Sam Oye Podcast, the program that uplifts your spirit, renews your mind, and transform your life every week. And now, here is your host, the Reverend Sam Oye. Luke chapter 7 in verse 11 to 15. Luke chapter 7 in verse 11 to 15. Just a few verses of scriptures. All right, Luke chapter 7 in verse 11. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain. And many of his disciples went with him and much people. Verse 12. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, before, behold, there was a dead man that was carried out, the only son of his mother. And she was a widow. And much people of the city was with her. Verse 13. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, weep not. Verse 14. And he came and touched the buyer or came to touch that upon which the casket is being carried. And they that bear him stood still. And he said to the young man, I say to you, can I hear everybody say that word? Amen. Say loud and clear as much as you can. Amen. Verse 15. Can we all read verse 15 together? One, two, go. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. Can I, can I prophesy that that which seemed to have died in your life is going to bounce back again? I, I'm, I'm not hearing you. That thing that the devil thought he has killed that thing that the devil thought he has taken life out of, I came to declare today that by the touch of God, that thing is coming alive again. Your dream is coming alive again. Your vision is coming alive again. Your ministry is coming alive again. Your career is coming alive again. I speak to your mind to come alive again. Somebody shout, I'm coming alive again. No, come and say like, come in and say, I'm coming alive again. Over the next few minutes, I pray that the Lord will minister through his word to you in Jesus' mighty name. Please be seated as I talk to you about the touch of Jesus. The touch of Jesus. Somebody say the touch of Jesus. As you read your New Testament, you will find that there are two kinds of touch or touches that you find in the New Testament. Very powerful as you look at them. And I don't have all the time to exegete the text, but I will just lay the foundation for my conversation with you today. As you look at your Bible, you find out that there are two kinds of touches that you experience in the word of God. Number one, you have a situation whereby people touched Jesus. So there is something we call the touch on Jesus. And then there is something we call the touch of Jesus. In every situation, you always find a case whereby somebody is either touching him or he is touching them. And either way, whether someone touched him or he touched someone, depending on how the person that touched him touched Jesus, you always hear there is a miracle. And Jesus also goes beyond schedule sometimes to touch people. So I want to talk to you on how to trigger the power of God through what we call the torch of Jesus. Like I've stated, if you look at the word of God, you'll find cases where people just touched Jesus. And as they touched him, miracles happened. Mark chapter 6 verse 56. The Passion's translation. I love the way the Bible puts it there. Wherever he went, in the countryside, the villages and the towns, they placed the sick on mats in the streets, in the public places. And they begged him saying, just let us touch the tassel of your prayer show. I, I wish I had my prayer show here. They said, let us touch, not you. We just want to touch anything touching you. It's so powerful that the Bible says, I wish I have the bigger one. 
This one is a more stylish one for women, you know. <laughs> Praise God. So, so here's the game. This thing at the fringes is what we call the tassels. So the Bible says Jesus everywhere, everywhere Jesus went, Jesus was always dressed in a prayer shawl. So when you hear the Bible says and the woman touched the hem of his garment, what the Bible was talking about was the tassels of his prayer shawl. She didn't have to touch him. She only had to touch what was touching him. Can I say that again? You really don't need to touch the man of God. If you can touch anything touching the man of God, you will be touching the same thing that is on the man. And I'll prove that to you. The Bible says that just let us touch that the souls of his prayer shore. But listen to what follow. I, I thought the Bible says they came to touch the tassels of his prayer show. Can everybody look at the statement that followed? And all who touched what? Wait a minute. What were they out to touch? And when they touched the tassels, the Bible says what did they touch? Who did they touch? They touched him. There is something about touching the Lord with your faith. There is something about stretching your faith to touch the Lord. So the Bible says all who touched him were instantly healed. Somebody said instantly. Say it again. Say instantly. Look at Luke chapter 18 verse 45. The Passion's translation. Jesus suddenly stopped and said to his disciples, someone touched me. I, I want you to remember the scripture we read before. The Bible says they wanted to touch what? The tassels and all who touch the tassels actually touch who? <laughs> I wish you would catch this today. If you get this today, you will come to a place in your faith where all you just need to do is pick out your handkerchief and say, Pastor, bless it for me. And you walk out of that place and you will not need the pastor again because everything on the pastor is what you carry in your hands. It's the way the anointing works. One of the things you need to know about the anointing, it is transferable and transmittable. The anointing is transferable and it's transmittable. How many of you have had the testimonies of what God is doing across the world as we pray over the prayer show? How many of you have heard all those testimonies? Amazing things God doing across the nations of the earth. Cancers being healed. All kinds of diseases being healed. And, and, and it's just about, listen, she didn't touch him. She only touched something that has touched him. It's called the tassels. Let's look at the scripture. Jesus suddenly stopped and said to his disciples, someone touched me. Who was it? While they all denied it, Peter pointed out, master, listen to this everybody, don't miss this. So you understand the kind of touch we're talking about. Peter said, everyone is doing what? Is touching you. Trying to do what sir? Get close to you. The crowds are so thick we can't even walk through all these people without being what? Jostled. Verse 4 to 6. Jesus replied, Yes, but I felt what? Power did what? Surge through me. Someone did what? Talk to me. Someone did what? Touched me. And I felt power surging through me. Someone touched me. Watch this carefully. They said everybody is touching you. But listen to what Jesus said. He said someone touched me to be healed. Did you get that ma'am? Someone did what? Touched me. But there was a clear intentionality behind this. 
This was not everybody's touching you. This is somebody touching me with an expectation, with a clear intention. I didn't just come to church to sit down like everybody. I didn't just come to occupy space. I came on this Sunday to receive something from the Lord. And you know the amazing thing? Jesus said, I'm aware of those who were touching me without expectation. He said, the one I'm talking about is somebody who touched me with a clear expectation. So every Sunday, the power to heal is in the service. Every Sunday, the power to touch and change your life is in the service. The only difference between those who walk out change and those who don't walk out change is one word, expectation. Someone once said to me when I was growing up in my Christian faith, the person said to me, say, Pastor Sam, expect nothing, see nothing. He said, expect nothing, have nothing. You come to the presence of God expecting nothing. He said, you walk away with nothing. Is there anybody here who came with an expectation here today? Wave your hands at me. Jesus said, someone touched me to be healed. And listen to what he said. He said, someone touched me to be healed and the person received. Someone touched me to be healed and the person received. If you can touch him today with your faith, you can receive. And it's so instant. I travel around the world and I see miracles. I'll never forget that you were with us in London. I will never forget the case of a lady whose ear just popped open. I've seen that happen in Canada. I've seen it happen in Cameroon. I've seen it happen everywhere. A woman called, she said, Pastor Sam, she said, my husband is having stage four cancer. Can't even breathe in Texas. So that they've already given them few days or weeks for the husband to leave. She said, but I refuse to accept it. She said, on that day when you were praying on the screen, listen to what the woman said. She said, I used the picture of my husband and I touched the screen. And I expected God to do something. And the man came out of the breathing machine. A few days later, the man was back home. From stage four. <laughs> Pastor Shego, Mrs. Akonde, I guess she must be watching right now from Texas. She shared the story of someone who was having cancer. The person had gone to the hospital. And the person called and said, sorry, are you at home? She said, I want to come see you. And she said, yes, I'm at home. And when the person came, she said, what's the problem? She said, oh, they just gave me a negative report right now. They told me that there's nothing more they can do about this cancer situation. And she said, well, why don't you join me tonight? Stay in my house. Join me tonight. Let's pray together. Let's join Pastor Sam in prayer. And she joined us because it was almost late into the night. Decided to join us in prayer. And that night, I didn't even know, and the Lord just let us begin to curse the root of cancer. The next day in the morning, she told her sister, stand up, let's go to the hospital. She said, for what? She said, we're going back for another report. She said, I just left the hospital yesterday. How can you say we should go back? Please. She said, my sister, we are going there 8 a.m. She carried her sister took her to the hospital 8 a.m. in the morning. The doctor saw her and they said, ma'am, what are you looking for? She said, we came for another test. They said, sorry, we just tested you yesterday. We gave you the results and all of that. And they started the check from 8 o'clock until 3, 4 p.m. in the evening. And the doctors will check and check and check. I think she came here. She flew down to Nigeria to come join us. The doctors had to check and check. And they were like, well, you're not the one we saw yesterday. No trace of cancer. Am I talking to somebody here? 
a man brought his daughter here. I don't know if it's in this service. I think they normally come for first service. A man brought his daughter here a few months ago. I said, Pastor, I think a man or a woman with his wife, they came and said, Pastor, my daughter, they, she has a problem. She can't talk. She, I said, no, she will talk. Who made the mouth? Who made the tongue? And we said, Lord, touch this child. And they just came to me last Sunday and they said, Pastor, the girl can talk very well now. And I said, can I hear her? And they said, yes, sir. And the girl went on talking. And they said, Pastor, you know Nigerians, the moment God finished doing that, they said, Pastor, hey, then the next one now, sir, is that we want her to start topping the class. I have hardly had somebody who come to share testimony and not add prayer request. Nigeria, I've never, I, man of God, Pastor, praise the Lord. My leg has just come out now. Can you please pray that I have a car? <laughs> We get that all the time. Pastor, praise the Lord. Finally, Papa, God just miraculously provided the money for the rent. Hallelujah. Papa, now pray, please, that I'm able to build my own house. Every testimony ends with a prayer request. But again, we love the Lord because miracles know the tire up. One of the amazing things that I love is when we hear testimony saying, I am back to testify again. I'm sure you've heard that on PPH. I am back to testify because miracles don't tire him. The only thing he's looking for is somebody that can touch him with faith. Somebody that I'm talking right now, you're saying, Father, I touch you, I touch Jesus by faith concerning my job. Concerning my career. As you are listening, you are extending your faith. Because of my time, I need to quickly jump out of that. So you find that when people touch him, things happen. But the one I love is when he touches us. And I was, I was trying to figure out the difference between those who touch him and the ones he touched. And I found out that most of the ones who touch him were people whose situation still permits them to exercise their faith. There are people whose situation still permits them. Yes, she is bleeding, but the woman still has the power to exercise her will. But in cases where he touches people, you find out that in those cases, people have lost the right to exercise their will. So whether you have the power to exercise your will to touch him, or you have been so battered by life situation, and you find it difficult to touch him, he can touch you. So it doesn't matter who you are today, he has the power to touch you. Simon's mother-in-law was lying down sick in Matthew chapter 8 verse 15. Simon's mother-in-law, Jesus entered into the house and when Jesus entered into the house, he found her sick. She was so sick of a fever that she couldn't even express herself. And Jesus said, ma'am, I don't need you to exercise your faith now. And Jesus took his hands and he touched the woman and instantly the Bible says the woman was healed. Somebody say, Lord, touch me. Say like you mean, say, Lord, touch me. It doesn't matter where you're seated in this hall today. The disciples of Jesus were overwhelmed by fear. The Bible said they had seen Moses, they had seen Elijah. They were overwhelmed by fear in Matthew chapter 17. And the Bible said because of fear they fell to the ground. And Jesus came there and touched them and reassured them and spoke fear out of their life. He can touch you. There were two dead children that were brought to Jesus at two different times. And Jesus supernaturally will touch even the daughter of Jairus and see her come back to life. He will touch the blind and give them their sight. He will touch the crippled daughter of Abraham and cause her to walk again. There is something about the touch of Jesus. There's something about the touch of Jesus. It is so funny that a man's hair was cut off 
And Jesus put his hand, touched the ear, put it back in that man's ear. It's it, it, in his head. It's just so amazing what the touch of Jesus can do. One of the things that I love about the scripture, I wish I can just spend some time to pray. Our time is up. One of the things that I love about the scripture that we have just read has to do with this woman who the Bible says her son died, her husband had died first. And the Bible says that after her husband died, the Bible says the next thing the enemy came for was her son. I, I, I want to pray for somebody who's been experiencing serial challenges here. I really want to pray for somebody like that here today and I'm, I want to just speak a word over your life that God will touch you. The Bible says concerning this woman she had lost the child and just when you're thinking that was the end of it all it was followed. She had lost the husband and while she was weeping over the loss of her husband she was still in her mourning season and then she got to hear that her son was sick and the next thing that happened was the son died. I just want to pray for someone today who you're just hearing this is happening. It's called serial tragedy. Job had just lost, lost the business, lost this, lost that, and then lost children. Everything happening. And the reason why you need to pray about this is because the devil will not stop at what he took the last time. Did you hear what I said now? The devil will not stop at what he took away from you the last time. What he took away, if you don't resist it, if you don't fight it, He's going to go for the next. He's always going to start with the ones that you will excuse. And then he will reach for the one that will cost you the most. Stealing my husband is not an issue because that's my past. But taking a son is our future. Long and short of it, eventually the boy died. And they were carrying the boy to go and bury the boy. And as they were going to bury the boy. Now in the city of Nain, it is a custom that once, once you carry a dead body past the gate, that dead body, even if the dead body rises outside the gate, the dead body never comes back again because they believe that's a ghost. I'm trying to show you how timely Jesus can be. Jesus was in another, was in another crusade somewhere in another city ministry and the crowd were reaching out for Jesus. But in the midst of the crowd, Jesus sensed the need. He saw the need in the heart of a woman who couldn't cry for help. It's not all the time that God responds because we pray. In most of the cases, God shows up because of his mercy. Am I talking to somebody in the house of God? I love to pray. But Pastor Sunday, if the truth were to be told, most of the things that God has done in our lives, it's not because we prayed. Is there anybody like me in the house here? The door that God opened, was it your prayer? The favor you granted your God, was it your prayer? Tell me about your prayer life. Is it your prayer life that has brought you to where you are? I get people like me who are recipients of the mercies of God. If God has shown you mercy, can you give him a shout of praise in the house? Is there anybody in the choir? Is there anybody here that wants to say, Pastor, it's the mercy of God that has made me what I am. It's not my prayer life. It's not my fasting. I there are some people over there. The money is not because you are smart. The job is not because you're better. Is there somebody that will say, God just showed me mercy. If you are a product of mercy, give him a shout of praise in the house. My wife and I today, my wife and I today, we ran into a lady. We were coming from a, a somewhere and we ran into a lady who was walking right in our front. Right in our front. A man of God, what was she wearing? She was wearing a gown. And, and as I, I, mean, I mean what I'm saying, sir. She was, we just came out and here was she right in our front with her friend. She was wearing a gown that was right here and absolutely nothing under. I'm not saying it's a bit below, right at the middle of her bum bum. My wife was so upset that my wife went to her and said, can I invite you to church? <laughs> and you know what, sir? The moment we went past that place, the Lord said to me, says, son, in the next three years, the same girl you are looking at, in the next three years, she's going to be a woman of God. She's going to be an anointed person. That same lady that you, whilst we were talking, sir, she puffed some stuff. So she was smoking. But the Lord said to me, said, son, that was how some of us were. The 
Lord said to me, he said, son, how is it that those who committed abortion are having children and those who never had sex are praying for children? It's a mystery. The moment you begin to think you deserve it, that's when God will show you you don't qualify for it. Man of God, have you seen Christians who will say to you, but what have I done? I thought they said we should live a clean life. I thought they said we should do, 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 do. I thought they said we should do, do, do. Why is it that? Why is it that? Well, come, let's talk together. They said my pastor told me he's been here. Pastor Kawa Pagel, I brought him here. He told us, listen, he said, if you want God to use you, he said, make sure you don't have sex. And so, until we got married, sir, no sex. Mary Oya will never forget, I bought her a shoe after proposing to her, sir. I brought her a shoe. I mean, that's what generous brothers should do. You don't just come around with your tie. Amen. So, so I brought her a shoe. And when I gave her the shoe, she came to me. She was like, can I ask you something? I said, what's it? She said, can I hug you? Ah, holy brother. Magazo vradia tehata. Flee from all appearance of evil. <laughs> I said to her, I said, No. She said, I know you were going to say no, no. I said, listen to me. I said, sorry, I said, wait. She said, but why now? But, but you hug Sister Joy. I said, I hug Sister Joy. I said, you don't know your name? I said, you don't know your name is Mary? I said that the Bible said, while they were about to come together, the Lord kept Joseph away. I said, you are Mary. That's what has affected you. I can't touch you until we marry. So what she showed me on the night of our wedding, I asked myself, who sent me into this assignment? She came with anger. All those compressed anger, compressed wickedness. <laughs> oh, I sense the presence of God. Uh, and the Lord said to me he said son isn't it funny to know that that same girl you saw dressed like that may have wasted her life now he said but you know there's something about that girl like David she's always saying father show me mercy he said son righteousness is advantageous it is a great thing to live a righteous life. By no means am I suggesting that you live an unrighteous life. But I'm saying your faith is not in your righteousness. The moment you begin to trust in your righteousness as a basis why God should honor you, it is a reason why you will not be answered. There is a touch that comes through the mercy of God. Somebody saying, God... I just need you. I just need your touch. I just need you to minister. Somebody just got healed as I'm talking right now. Father, I just need your touch. If you're sitting down, you want to stand up right now because our time is gone. I just don't know how we're going to do this. But somebody just want to say, Lord, I need your touch. I need your touch. Somebody's body is being healed right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say, Father, touch me. And somebody say, Lord, I, I touch you by faith. I touch you by faith. I taught you by faith. Every sick person in the house, we curse the root of that infirmity. We curse the root of that infirmity. Very quickly, because of my time, we're, run, we're out of time. I want to pray for someone who's been going through serial tragedy, serial setback, serial pain, serial losses. It's just been happening back to back. And you just can't tell why this thing has continued. I want to speak a stop to it. Very quickly, can you come? I just want to speak a word over you right now. The Lord sent me on that mission today. And I know the person is in the house. I'm not going to lay hands on you. I just want to speak a word over your life. You've been going through from one loss to another from one bad situation to another and the Lord sent me to speak a stop to it a stop to it a stop to it a stop to it the rest of us lift your hands so the Lord is it touch me just ask the Lord to touch you he touched me yes he touched me 
And all the joy that fills my Something happened And now I know He touched me And me Somebody lift your voice He touched me Yes And what joy Something happened Please, I want every I see some of you tears running down your eyes. It's okay. This is the last time you will see this. I honestly feel like laying hands on you, but we can't do that now. I think I'm going to minister to a lot of you prophetically in the second service. I just need all of your amens in the house. Everyone watching me right now. You may even be standing in the gap for somebody right now. Can we just pray together? Every one of you, I may not be able to touch you. Place your hand on your own self. Right now, place your hand on yourself right now. Serial tragedy has to come to an end. Father, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for everyone out here. And I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I will need your amen to come strong when I pray. That from today, I put an end to this series of tragedies. I put an end to series of rejection. I decree and declare that rejection will not follow rejection. Death will not follow death. Disappointment will not follow disappointment. Setback will not follow setback. Reproach will not follow reproach. I decree and declare that from this moment you will not see shame after shame. From today in accordance with the word of God I declare over you that surprise will follow surprise. Surprise will follow surprise. Favor will follow favor. Open doors upon open doors. Liftings will follow liftings. In the name of Jesus, the son of a living God, we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Father. I ask that the touch of God be upon your life. And we call this an end to the tragedy so far. In Jesus' mighty name. Please, I want the rest of us to lift our hands up. The Lord just want me to pray for you. Everybody, just lift your hands. I'm going to ask the Lord because I can't call all of you out here. Everyone, I just need your amen. If I pray a prayer concerning you, I just need your amen. Father, everyone who need a touch from you to change their finances the financial situation you are in I decree right now let the touch of God be upon your life the Bible says and everyone that touched him received can I decree again and declare by the touch of God I bring an end to your financial crisis. By the touch of God, I bring an end to financial adversity. By the touch of God, I bring an end to every sickness. Everyone sick in the house, I decree and declare an end to every sickness. I decree an end to every sickness. I decree and enter every affliction. Let the touch of God be upon your life right now. Everyone under a demonic attack, I decree the touch of Jesus on your life. Let the attacks come to an end. Let the afflictions come to an end. If you receive it, let me have a big amen in the house. Of Everyone trusting God for a touch. For open doors this week. Touch for open doors this week. Touch for favor this week. Touch on your life for open doors. 
touch on your life for open doors. If you receive it, let me have a big amen in the house of I hear the word speed. Let the touch of God be on your life for speed. From this moment, begin to gain speed a thousand times more. Let there be acceleration in your life. Let there be advancement in your life. What you have been waiting for, I pray it enters your hand this week. If you receive it, let your amen be loud in the house of God. Give the Lord a shout of praise in the house of God. Please go back to your seats. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you would like to help support the podcast through your giving and donations, kindly click on the donate button or visit www.samoyepodcast.com. Don't forget to join us daily for the Prophetic Prayer Hour with Rev Sam Oye via YouTube channel at Rev Sam Oye. Also, if what you desire is a change in your faith, family, and financial life, then experience the unraveling ministry of Rev Sam Oye by being in any of our life transforming services. Log on to www.thetransformingchurch.org for details. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and on Twitter at Rev Sam Oye. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next episode.